Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Butter What Show. I'm uh, Pat Regan, and this is my co-host, BrianCMoses.com from the internet. And our friend Jeremy, JeremySCook.com, is going to be starting a Kickstarter soon for his uh, JC Pro Macro Pad, Macro 2. We didn't even get a Kickstarter for the first one. It's just the second one. And I figured we should talk about it since the Kickstarter's coming up, and I'm pretty excited about it. I've been macro padding like crazy here at the house. He's been sending me prototypes, and I've been putting them together. And there's another one over there that I'm using today. You haven't even brought one over to show to me. Have I, I don't not? think you have. Oh, that sucks, sucks for I, you. Add it to your to-do list. I will add that to my to-do list. What Jeremy has Tubby is a... Uh-oh. How many keys is that? Six, eight. It's eight. I'm goofed up because the original ones had five and the new ones have three more and I can't do math. Math is math is hard. Doing. But there's eight keys. There's two little buttons there next to the volume knob, the rotary encoder. And one of those is just the reset button for the Arduino, but the other one lets you change. It's a it's basically a okay. key. With his custom software, it changes modes like standard mode or video editing mode or it's what QMK would call late. And I don't have the OLED display on any of mine, but he sells those too, and they'll be part of the Kickstarter. Because I'm going to skip, there's early bird prices and things in here. I'm not going to worry about the early bird price. You can get just the PCB to make your own from scratch with, with no components. You can get the PCB for a few dollars more. I'm not going to say how many. With LEDs already installed. And they're surface mount LEDs. So even if you could solder, you might have trouble with the surface mount LED. And then we get up to a bigger number, and you can get a full kit with keys, knob, rotary encoder, you know, the bottom plate, the keycaps, everything. Oh, and the Arduino. This runs on an Arduino Pro micro board, and that'll be included in the full kit. And yeah, I don't actually see the OLED display in any of them. Okay. Ones. So don't don't tell anybody that I said it supports an OLED display. And I don't want a display on mine. I wanted lights, LEDs on mine. So I had our fantastic designer make me these tiny little, look at me. I'm peeking out here and she's focusing on me so I can don't see. Don't let it see. These tiny little LED boards, Brian. You ever see these? I okay? have. I'm excited about these. These are uh, micro versions of our Uber lights. What's an Uber lights board? I want to show it to you on the macro pad, but it's plugged in. Maybe you can put it on the screen, a video of it. I can put it on the screen, but I want to show you that I have something that works. I have a test one here on an Arduino for messing around. And I just want to show you guys that this lights up. There are 21 RGB LEDs on here. And they can, you know, light up, do little dances and things. The idea is to have things spin like this to show you your network traffic or your disk throughput. Little bar graphs running around like you know, from light up from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock to show 50% disk utilization. Things like that. I had our designer put three pins on it right where Jeremy has three pins on the back of back side of his uh, macro pads. And I plugged it right in and it just started working. I was so That's excited. fantastic. Here's the page with the, they're not moving on here though. It's just a still image. I mean, I have these on Tindy. I think they're going to be $18 because... That just, that's the number that made sense to me. Yeah. That's, check them uh, out on Pat's Tindy store. Check them out on my Tindy store. So maybe if you're uh, buying Jeremy's fancy Kickstarter, you might want to add one of these to the list. I've got these doing a few little things. Like I can, uh, I can talk to them over USB serial through Jeremy's macro pad and make, you know, make like spin and blink and things, but I haven't tied it to any real metrics or anything. But the possibilities there, the abilities that like, it can be done. I just haven't made yeah. it happen. The proof the, of concept. The hardware exists. The software needs to come to fruition. But I don't know what you're doing with your macro pad, Tubby. I know you have a fancy stream. I deck. do. I have I have the stream deck here, and I'm still not. I I've done one thing with it, and that's make a checkerboard of my face. Since it's got little tiny a display, I can stick a an image on each of the buttons. Mine's not quite that fancy. I don't get to have images. I just get to light the buttons up with color. It queries Home Assistant to tell me the state of the lights so that one of these uh, one of these buttons controls my podcasting lights. So if I give it a bump, it'll adjust the lights accordingly so that I can talk to you correctly. And the other button, the most important button on here is my headphone button, which is green right now because it's on my headphones. And green means safe. safe. It goes red when it's the speakers. So... You know, if it was going to reverberate back okay. through everything, 
it would let me know that. And I'm using it with uh, my video editor, DaVinci Resolve. And when you turn the knob, it just in, it clicks one frame at a time. The knob is like your mouse wheel. You know how yep. it goes click, click, click? It, it's just like that. It does, I think, 10 or 20 clicks in one go around. So, so you can kind of go like this to the wheel and it'll go. Mine, mine does not have that wheel. I'm kind of jealous of the of the wheel and i've got it i'm you doing some fancy coding to look at window titles and change the functionality of the macro pad like right now it's a volume knob but if i was in davinci resolve it would be a frame by frame do that and it lights up to tell me that there's it's really cool jeremy has lights underneath like uh you know those neon lights they used to have on uh on japanese cars when we were yes. younger do uh, they, still they do probably that? do they're probably LEDs now. But it's a lot like that, but I changed the color, so I know I'm in DaVinci Resolve and it's not going to be a volume knob just by looking at it. Oh, shirt. I sh I didn't understand what Chris was saying, but Chris is most excited about the one for the CSC. Yes. Yeah, what have, what have you been, what else have you been using your macro pad for, Pat? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what else I've been using it for. All right, so Tubby, I am using my pen, my pendant, my macro pad, my JC Pro Macro 2 as a pendant for my CNC machine. Like you hang it around, you, you hang it around the, the CNC machine's neck. You wear it around your neck like a, like a clock. I don't know why they call it a pendant. Cause I think they usually do hang. You usually hang it up. Yeah. Well, I imagine it's dangling but, from a shelf or something, right? Yeah. And you just grab it by the cable and like your mouse tail. But one of the things I have to do on my CNC is move the, you have to move the tool around. It's, you know, your 3D printer always, shouldn't say always, but I will anyway. It always prints right in the middle in that big empty yep. space, right? But the CNC, you have to kind of tell it where your material is. There are ways to automatically do that, but there are also, I tend to have to find the corner of my material. And that involves clicking arrow keys a lot or tapping on the touch screen on my okay. tablet. But what this does is, and it lights up to tell me which axis I'm operating on. And every click of the wheel is one unit of movement. And I have three keys. Now, I'm running out of keycaps here. This is uh, greater than, less than, and something in the middle here. But it's 0.1 millimeter, 1 millimeter, and 10 millimeters. So every tick of the knob, and you can go crazy and, you know, wind it around, is one one of those units. And you, it's been fantastic. It's so much easier to, to put your hand on this and just give a little tweak than to try to look at a touch look pad. Look at a touch pad or the, use a... Or my yeah. tablet. Yeah, you have to actually touch the correct part of the tablet to make it work, but this is gotcha. tactile. Yeah, that's way better. And I've also programmed in the home and pause buttons. The home button does what you expect at home yep. the machine, just like just like your 3D printer. It finds the corner. And the pause key is a stop and... It doesn't start a new job, I don't think. I have it set up to, you know, whoa... Take a break there so we could check something, you know, tighten things down or something if it's getting loose or who knows what. But I'm super excited about this because real pendants aren't that cheap, especially ones that you can plug into a key as a keyboard. And I'm using something called CNC.js on a Raspberry Pi to control my my machine. And well, I don't know about an and, but this is I have this working very well with the browser interface of CNC.js. I think this is worth checking out if you need a pendant yeah, for your Shiboko that, or X carve. That needs to be that needs to be a blog, its own its own video on how to set that up and use it. It does. And the firmware is a little complicated. That's not complicated, but it's not it's not as simple as, you know, just sending keys because it has to change what you know, the, the encoder switches from arrow keys to page up, page down to up and down. I forget what the keys CNCJS uses, but they switch okay. as you you know, as you change direction or pacing jeremy told me what day that kickstarter was going to start he changed okay. his mind and i don't want to tell you the exact day but if i know it will be written right here there'll be a link in the description everybody should go check it out i think it's worth buying even if you don't buy it it's worth looking at because i bet you kickstarter will be excited if you look at it and they might uh make other people go look at it which jeremy would very much appreciate and if you guys don't know, Jeremy's a friend of mine. He's the co-host of the other podcast I'm on, the Creativity Podcast. Is this a disclaimer, Tubby? Does that uh, count? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's not like you're invested or being compensated to, to encourage people to go check out the Kickstarter, which they should do. Well, I've got free yeah. macro pads here. Is my... 
Bender like getting dimmer? I don't know. As we go, I feel like it is. Let me know in the comments if Bender's been getting dimmer the whole episode.